Normally, I, what I would do is go across the goal. It might be quite interesting. Oh, nice. Welcome to this site, which is the Warwick Allotment site. Um, this is about six years old now, um, and there's a few people here, mainly standing over there, that are involved in, in, in this. Um, and so this is a bit of a collaboration between two organisations, like the Food Union and the Pod on the one hand, and then this space on the other. So we're going to walk to one of the Food Union sites now. Basically, as Chris said, uh, the plan is to have a two or three hour walk and workshop, uh, looking at a few uh, edible and poisonous common local species. Um, and then after we arrive, then we're going to cook up some of the food. So there's going to be some food there already um, that we're going to kind of, because we don't know what we're going to find, so if not, we haven't ba banked on creating a feast today. But yeah, we're going to be cutting in some of the stuff for, that we find hopefully along the way today. Um, so if you can make it that far, you'll be rewarded with food. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Um, so, first of all, uh, I'll just say a bit about myself. Um, so I work as a tree pruner, that's my day job, so you know something about me. Um, and I really like foraging, I like botany, plant science, plants. Um, just as a hobby um, and yeah I've been kind of doing these workshops for about five years um, so uh, if you want to line up go to that side if you feel confident foraging and that side if you feel less confident and if you're in the middle stay in the middle in pairs now and I want you to discuss two questions first of all why you feel confident or less confident and second of all uh, why you came here. So you two together, you two together, you two together, you two, you two, you and you two, you two together. Those, the things I know, I probably got, I'm quite confident in. But that's okay, so coming back together, uh, one of the people who was the least confident can you give us one reason why you were less confident? I've never foraged before. <laughs> Good reason. Another reason from that side. You don't want to eat something that's going to hurt you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got, I don't know uh, about it, the law, and thing, things that could be poisonous or otherwise harmful. Okay, and the confidence side. Are you at school? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so tell us a bit more. Um, when I was at, at school, we used to get like uh, things, and then we we just make like all different ingredients, and then we cook a lot of things, so like a cake or something. Um, and that's fine because they tend to be the things that are easily identifiable against something else. But then it's the ones that are quite similar that sometimes I still need to refresh what the differences are between them. Okay, so this is a brilliant principle. So we are going to talk about the specific things that were mentioned, but uh, what's your name? Uh, Nadia. Nadia. So what Nadia said is choose plants that you are 100% sure about to start off with, okay? And what we're going to cover on this walk is some that are very easy to identify for beginners and some that aren't. Um, and it's always worth sticking to the ones that you're sure about before branching into ones that look edible and may well be poisonous, okay? Um, so, a few things that were mentioned, the law. Uh, does anyone know the law on foraging? I know there's someone here who's been on the walk four times. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. <laughs> I actually don't know the law, not that far. Okay. Um, so, the law on foraging in England and Wales is that as long as you're foraging non-commercially, uh, you can go onto private land and pick plants that are truly wild, so haven't been planted, okay? Um, so I'm going to give you an example now uh, to talk in pairs. If you go onto the prince's land and pick an apple from his apple tree and blackberries from his brambles, um, are they both legal, are they both illegal, or is it um, 
one is illegal and one is legal. I mean, it could have been. So, trespass within itself is not a criminal offence in England and Wales or Scotland. Um, so, you're absolutely right. As long as you're foraging non commercially, you can pick the wild uh, blackberries, but not the cultivated apples. Um, I know you're all dying to know the specific legislation that covers foraging, okay? Or at least. I am dying to share otherwise useless knowledge, okay? <laughs> so, um, first of all, the Theft Act, um, 1968 I believe it is, um, so that has an exemption of four Fs, um, which can be gathered from the wild without uh, constituting theft, as long as it's non-commercial, and that is flowers, fruit, foliage and fungi. So, what does that exclude? What does that not cover? It makes it a specific offence to gather uh, roots without the landowner's permission um, for conservation reasons. What should we have as ground rules for conservation for foraging? So, um, I'm going to do another spectrum line. Stand on that side if you think foraging is generally good for the environment and on that side if you think foraging is generally bad. So good and bad. And ground rules um, for foragers that they should for, uh, follow when harvesting. So you two together, you two together. For example, um, mushrooms. Um, there's a lot of talk, isn't there, about over-harvesting of mushrooms from, again, the City of London Corporation that um, control various uh, forests. Um, and you may have seen in the media in the last few years, foraging has become quite trendy, and then, like, as the media like to do, they build it up and knock it down and say that it's having a devastating effect on conservation. Um, and this has been particularly true with the City of London Corporation prosecuting people for harvesting mushrooms. Now, they've... There's been some studies into this um, which have revealed that um, there's no evidence, or at least there's no clear evidence, the, the studies are mixed, um, that um, harvesting uh, the fruit bodies of fungi, so the above ground parts, um, has an impact on um, the, the, uh, the population. Pretty obvious, one of the risks of foraging is being poisoned, okay, and it does happen. Um, it's very, 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 very important that um, you understand that there is no such thing as looking edible. <laughs> it doesn't exist. That is not how plants work, okay? They don't look edible or not look edible, okay? Um, this is poisonous, um, so I'm going to trust you to not eat it. You three... Um, have a look at the plant and see if you ever see it on the way. Look, we're going to go off and start hunting, but before we do, um, there's a little memento and a souvenir that you can take away from today to remember all the uh, exciting plants we're going to see. I feel like you might be the one we're waiting on. Okay, right, pressure's on. What is similar between this plant and the one on your card? From what I can see, the leaves are the same shape. And it has what a very, shape? like, sort of white, long and pointy. Yeah, long and pointy. And then the bud at the top has got a pink colour into it. Yep, yeah, fantastic. Okay, so these are key things to start looking out for. Um, and other ways that we can describe leaves, so if we take one in, as an example, if you look at the edge of the leaf, the border or the margin, um, I'm still going to pick on you, sorry, who's got this um, plant. Uh, is the border toothed or is it smooth and simple? It's smooth and simple, okay. So that's um, one useful thing when looking at leaves um, and one of the things that you'll be having to uh, use to sort through them when you uh, use keys in wildflower guides. So we've already had um, examples of how to use it. So as a drink, um, as uh, a flavouring with fish, um, in other ways as a lemon, lemon substitute or as a few leaves uh, mixed into a mixed salad. 
That was Sorrel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is our next plant. Um, so if you think this is the one on your card, then let us know. So if you want to uh, face the group and you'll be challenged to explain okay. why you think this plant is the same one as the one on your card. Okay. I think it's the same one because like the depth of colour is green and the um, shape of the leaf is the same, so it's got a fairly, What's similar about the shape? <laughs> it's quite long and it's pointed at the end, but it's quite rounded at this other end where the stem is. Um, so it looks like a little bit like the sorrel, but where the sorrel is pointed, here at the back this is rounded. Um, so I think that's <laughs> the main difference I can see. Do you remember that from last time? I just looked and it's pretty, it, I thought, oh, that's probably it. Yeah, that's never happened before. <laughs> wow, you got a natural. Okay. Um, although you should always use a book, there's no such thing as natural. <laughs> um, so, has anyone still got one of the sorrel leaves? Yeah, in my book. Yeah, in, in your book. book? Perfect. Oh, how useful. Um, that's even better, actually. I'll borrow What's you. that one called, though? Um, so, uh, yeah, why don't you explain to us, first of all, what the card says? So this is in as loud a voice as this you can. is really poisonous and it's called Lords and Ladies. I think there's a reason behind it and it had other names but I can't remember what it were. So it's got toothed edges to the leaves. The stem is obviously purplish red. Um, and this is meadow sweet. This is meadow sweet, oh. yes. Can you tell us what your card says? So meadow sweet, rose family, <coughs> flowers yeah. from June to September. The flowers give it its name as they were used to flavour mead. It contains salicylic, salicylic. salicylic acid, which is chemically similar to aspirin. Does anyone know what this plant is? Can you just turn it around a slight? No, it's still not helped. <laughs> okay, so this is a plant that's very toxic to horses. Oh, yes. <laughs> Say it louder. Uh, ragwort. Ragwort, absolutely. <laughs> lords and ladies. <laughs> uh, it's lords and ladies, and how do we pe tell it apart from uh, edible sorrel? It's rounded tips. Rounded tips. One more time. The rounded tips. Okay, so these tails, tips, basal lobes are rounded rather than sharp and pointed. And I've put in some spinach from the allotment into another uh, wander around, have a look. There's not much yet to see, but uh, yeah, feel free. If you've got any questions, come talk to me. What a few words about the foraging. I can show you my book. So, today I learnt about sorrel, which is lemony and delicious, but it has a poisonous look-alike called Lords and Ladies, so be careful. That's my drawing of Lords and Ladies. <laughs> For easy identification. So the day went really well. Um, we walked from Warwick Campus Allotment uh, through Tossa Wood and Candy Ford. It took a long time, longer than expected. Didn't make those calculations correct it correctly and we've ended up at CV5 in Chapel Fields at the New Food Union growing site and we've had some food and we've sat around in the sun it's been amazing the weather's been amazing and hopefully we've learned a lot about some plants that we can eat and uh, forage you know in the future